Thank you for tuning in to Upon the Rock broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Lawrence Shakira. I believe the Word of God will build a godly foundation in the lives of people. There is more available information on our website. You can log on to ShakiraMinistries.org. Now, let's go on to today's message. Hello again. Thank you for tuning into this broadcast. I would like to talk to those of you who are suddenly out of work or you haven't had a job in a while and you know your confidence is probably down because of you're not working and you want to be able to provide for yourself and you and rightfully so we all should want a desire to provide for ourselves but what happens like if you are suddenly laid off and now you have all these emotions going and you don't know what's going to happen next Let's, what, let's just kind of just jump into what the Bible says about that because uh, God is concerned about our, wealth, our welfare. God is concerned about the things that concern us. And so, um, you know, especially if you're a child of God, He doesn't want you to suffer. And at this time, a lot of uh, thoughts or even thoughts from the enemy will say you'll never make it, you'll always be this way, and this is how the rest of your life is going to be. And, and I'm here to tell you that that's not true, okay? So let's just see what the Bible says so we can feed our faith and starve our doubts to death. The Bible talks about in Psalms chapter 34, verse 10. This may be a memory verse for some of you all here that's listening. Psalms chapter 34, verse 10. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. The young lions, the strong part you know lions are sim symbolic of one of the strongest animals on the planet okay so he's talking about the young lions or in other words the young strong people the ones who have this strong gift or calling or strong assignment the young lions he says uh, lack and suffer hunger but those who wait on the Lord shall not lack any good thing hear that the strongest of the strongest will lack they will have their time of lack and they will suffer hunger. But those who wait on the Lord will not lack any good thing. If you are a child of God, God is concerned about you, like I said earlier. But things can be worse if you were not a child of God. And I say that humbly and I say that respectfully because, you know, um, you may say, well, things are already bad for me right now. Yes, they are, I, and, and I can agree with that, but, but they can be, you, don't, you have no idea how they can be even worse than what they are now. God is still covering. And so uh, we have to realize that, thank God that you're not allowing this situation to be as bad off as it could be. Okay? If the strong people, if the young lions are, are, are lacking and they're, they're, they're hungry, then I have to really make sure that God is on my side. Especially in a, in, a, in a crisis like this when you really don't know what you're going to do. We really need to make sure that we're, we're a close God. Not because, you know, it's a, a bad situation and I guess now I'm going to pray. No, it's just that, of course, you need God uh, just as much as you need Him every day. But especially during this, this season. Okay? So he says, excuse me, those who uh, seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. God will always provide the food you need, the shelter, even if it comes from somebody else. Um, but he will provide for you, those who seek after him. The key is, are we doing our part of seeking after God? Okay? And so, this is not trying to come off as a uh, braggadocio. If you're doing, if something's bad happening, you must be doing something wrong. It's not that. It's just that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And so everybody will have their season of going through something that is tremendously difficult. But he said, seek the Lord in those times. Because there is a portion of the Bible that says, seek the Lord where he may be found. In other words, sometimes God is closer to you than other times. Now, he's close all the time. But there is a season where God is a little bit more closer to you than other times. So he says, seek the Lord where he may be found. In other words, when he's, when he's closer to you. But that's the time to, to, to cry out to him. And anytime you hurt, anytime you're confused, anytime you are really uh, don't know what, what's next, I can assure you that God is closer to you during those times because he does not want you to you know, break down and, and um, 
be disappointed in yourself or in him or anything else. Okay? Look at what the Bible also says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 6. He says, He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. God will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Okay? I'm not sure if you ever got a chance to really just pay attention to a sunrise, but I have several times. And, and when, you, when you notice the sunrise, before the sun comes up, you can see signs of the sun of where it's going to come. You kind of get a direction of where it is. Uh, the sky turns these different colors. At first, you may see this pitch black sky, and then you may just see just a little bit of purple or green or orange or red. And you can just tell that, you know, the, the sun is starting to come up. But when it comes up, when you fully see the sun come, it's like this burst of just light right over there. just right in that portion of where it comes. And he says that's how it's going to be uh, with your righteousness. It's going to break forth, he says. It's going to break forth like 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 the light and your your justice as the noonday. The noonday is the time of when the sun is at its at its highest. And so there's no shadow of a doubt of when the sun is coming up. You can just step out there and see the sun because it's at its peak. He says your justice will be just like that at, at its peak. And so don't and I you know I say this in a sensitive way because I know this is a, it's a very sensitive subject for some of y'all that are out of work. But don't take it as as though that um, you know God is not concerned about you. Your justice is going to come as the noonday, and it's going to be as bright. And try not to worry about these light afflictions. What the Bible says, that Paul says, and um, God, if God is with you, then you will make it. Okay, it may be difficult. It may not be as easy as you would like it to be. But as long as God is with you. Then you, you'll you'll be you'll have everything you need to survive. But look how he also says, "Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him." I'll say that again: Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him. Resting in the Lord is basically placing your confidence in the Lord, trusting Him that He will do what He said He's going to do. Wait patiently on Him does not mean sit around and watch TV until God comes through. Waiting actually means to serve or to to it's just like a waiter when you go to a restaurant and they say are you ready to order they're your waiter they are waiting on you they're serving you but they are they're they're still busy some of them they, they give you drinks before they uh, take your order and so they're serving making motion doing doing things while they're waiting on you okay and so when he says wait patiently on the Lord you can still be doing some things while you're waiting for God to come through, whether it's filling out applications, whether it's, uh, you know, getting your resume together, whether it's knocking on doors to find other work. That's you waiting on the Lord. It's not saying that uh, you don't trust God, so you're going to go out there and do it yourself. No, you are, you know what, you already placed your prayer before God of, of letting you get another job or, or help you in this situation. But in the meantime, you're still occupying. You're still waiting on the Lord. You're waiting patiently on Him while you fill out the, the next application or while you look for the next part of work. That's how you wait on the Lord. Okay? That's how you wait patiently for Him. But then He also says, do not fret or do not worry. Or don't, don't be anxious. Do not worry because of Him who prospers in His own way. Don't be looking at other people now in this time of you you know, going through your thing and you see on the TV, it's like, why can't that be me? Or how is this person doing this? And I'm up here serving God. And, but no, 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 no. He says, don't worry about the person who's prospering in his own way. The guy who doesn't even look like they're paying attention to God and they still have, it seems like everything they need. He said, don't even look at that. Don't you let the devil get you off track by you focusing on somebody else. He says, don't, uh, don't fret because of him who prospers in his own way. Because of the man who brings wickedness schemes to pass. Now look at the guy who's obviously probably not even a born again believer, and they they, they have the nice cars, or they have the money, and they have the house, and they have the clothes, and they have whatever it is that you're looking for. He says because this because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. He says cease from anger because sometimes you can get a bit angry or a little bit bitter when you see other people that. Had no pay attention, no attention to God, and it seemed like they're doing just fine. He says, "Cease from anger on that, 
and forsake wrath. Don't let your temper flare. Don't you, don't you start getting bitter. Do not worry. It only causes harm. You know, when you start to put your expectations or when you start to look at other people, it can start to become bitter, bitterness in your heart. And he says, cease from anger and forsake wrath because it's not good for you. It will only harm you later on. The more you focus on those people and not keep your focus on God, it's only going to end up hurting yourself. So he says, let's, let's just get it all out the way and don't even focus on them. They'll have their day. This is between you and God. Let God weather this storm with you. You're on this boat. Jesus is on the back of the boat. You have to wake him up. He'll stop the storm. But don't you try to look at other people. Why, why is this happening to, to them? How come it got to happen to me? He said, don't even do that because it's only going to cause you harm. Okay? So that's why he's talking about you got to cease from anger because he realized that sometimes being a child of God, you're not going to understand everything. Okay? For evildoers shall be cut off. That's why he doesn't want you to worry. He says, because they're going to have their day. He said, evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait, they go that word, wait again, those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Those who wait on the Lord, who still trust God out of all of this situation that's happening, and they, you know, you just lost your job, or you don't have the income that you, you need. He said, those who wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. You keep doing what God calls you to do. Keep knocking on doors, keep filling on applications, keep going to interviews, build up your resume. You keep doing that, and he, he, God says, you will inherit the promise. You will inherit the earth. And like I said before, he said, don't, don't, don't focus on other people because their time will come too. Just like how you're having this potential storm, those, I guess, quote-unquote, evildoers will have their storm too. Now you don't you don't say that in a um, self righteous way. Oh yeah, okay, you gonna have your day. No, it's just that stay in your lane. Just do what God called you to do, and don't focus on everybody else, because God is the savior of the evil doers too. If they get if they repent and get right with God, God will God will uh, be with them too. But as for you, you just make sure that you are waiting, occupying until He comes. On the Lord and you will inherit the earth okay always have a good attitude about the situation that you're in because your attitude will determine your altitude it will determine how far you go because you have just a good pleasant attitude even though the situation and the circumstances are not right your attitude will go before you and it will it will cause doors to open Okay, so that's why it's so important to see the good out of any situation and be positive and not get bitter and not blame other people. When you go to that interview, don't blame the other job, don't blame the other boss, don't blame the other co-worker. You just be the best person that you can be. Okay, I hope this is helping somebody. Look how he says in Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 through 5, and he, and he, keeps, stay, he keeps saying about this waiting part occupied until God comes and keep doing things until you until you receive the promise he said I waited patiently on the Lord I was occupying until uh, the Lord came in I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me in other words he listened to me he he gave me the attention that I was looking for because I waited on him he gave me that attention are you waiting on the Lord are you complaining about the situation? Are you spending your time doing unproductive things, watching TV, when you could be doing something else more productive? He says, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He heard my plea. He heard the situation that I was in. I waited on him, and he heard me. He inclined, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit. He brought me up out of the unemployment lines. He brought me up out of the, the, um, the, the bill collector's column. He brought me up out of all of the horrible things that are, were associated as a result of me losing a job. And so he says, God has brought me up out of this horrible pit. Wouldn't you want God to do that with you? 
He said, he brought me up out of this horrible pit, out of the Murray clay, and watch this, set my feet upon a rock. Uh, of course, I love that term for obvious reasons, but he set my feet upon a rock, a stable place, a firm foundation, something that's not so wishy-washy, something that is stable for me to be able to stand and get rest. He says, out of the Murray clay, he set my feet on a rock, and he established my steps. It's wonderful when God establishes you, when you are not moved, you're, you, you have such a strong foundation that you can't be shaken or moved be of, of the situation. So God will hear your prayers, number one. He will incline his ears to you, hear your prayers, pull you up out of the horrible pit and set your feet upon a rock. But then he also says, watch this, he has put a new song in my mouth. Well, I think so. Once God places you up and places you on a firm foundation, you will. You can't help but give God glory. You can't help but to have a new song in your heart because you got that experience with God. You have experience with God that other people probably hadn't uh, hadn't even experienced yet. But you have taken the time to go through this storm with God, and now He has set your feet upon a rock, and He has given you a new song or a new testimony. He says, uh, he put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear, or many will see it and respect him, or honor him. That's what it means when he talks about fear. And watch this, and they will trust in the Lord. When God pulls you out of the horrible pit and places your feet on a firm foundation upon a rock, not only does it give you more experience with God, but it also communicates to other people that God is is still, you know, uh, in the saving business. God is still restoring people and it, it gives other people confidence when they see the testimony that how God has pulled you out and placed you there. It helps other people be assured that if God did it for you, he can do it for me. Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. If this message has been a blessing, you can help us spread the gospel by sharing this message with your friends. Also, if you're online, please be sure to contact me, either through our website at ShakirMinistries.org or through social media. I would love to hear from you. Together, we can build a godly foundation in the lives of people. Until next time, please know that I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you on our next broadcast.